Hey guys, Ivan here and in today's video we got some really, really interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is very, very exciting, it's Nexilla announcing his next show and it's going to be Italy Pro on September 8th. And you know who else is doing that show? Hunter Labrada, that's right. So this is going to be very, very interesting. As you can see, EVLS Prague Pro Official posted this announcement. They are sponsoring Rubio as well. And they say Rubio is not stopping. His next show is Italy Pro. He is still going to try and qualify for the Mr. Olympia in five weeks from now. Five weeks. That's plenty of time to get in really good condition. Like I said before, what he needs now is another four weeks or so of dieting, of getting in really good condition. Usually, I mean, it's very often that guys don't get in their absolute best condition and get their first show. Sometimes, very often, bodybuilders need a couple of shows to truly nail the conditioning. And also the fact that he said that he was pressured into doing the Dubai Pro even though he didn't want to, that he was sick one week out, that he was forced to switch coaches in the middle of the prep, and that also the prep was kind of short, that's what he said, now he has more than enough time to really nail it. However, the issue is the fact that Hunter Labrada, a top 6 Olympian, is doing that show. So the obvious question is, can Rubio defeat Hunter Labrada? I mean, if he does that, if he manages to do that, that really puts him up high on the bodybuilding ladder. So if he beats him, he's, uh, you know, top 6, top 7 Olympian. But can that really happen? I mean, that's definitely a topic for a separate video, Hunter Labrada versus Rubio Mosquera comparison, and it's a video that I'm probably gonna make, but right off the bat... I mean, if you take a look at this physics right here, like, you will notice that Rubio is definitely freakier and bigger, but he was also very freaky and very big against Nathan Diash and William Bonac and Becker Stabani, and he didn't beat them. Why? Was the conditioning really the only issue? I mean, granted, it wasn't great, but, I mean, it wasn't as horrible as some people make it seem. I mean, it wasn't good, but it's it's not the worst conditioning ever. It's not like Hassan Mustafa conditioning. I mean, sure, he can definitely get high, uh, tighter and, and drier for this show in five weeks, and that's gonna help a lot, you know. Then, as I talked about this already, he's gonna have the freak factor of the size, and if he has the freak factor of conditioning as well... He's gonna pull a Nick Walker, you know, Nick Walker managed to beat Hunter Labrada, even though Hunter has better shape. But that's the thing, the shape, the balance, the structure, the proportions, the symmetry. That's something Nexilla doesn't really have. And I don't know if you guys saw this video, this was posted by Milo Sharchev. He took this video and in this one, he actually looks a lot leaner, much more shredded than all the other videos that I've seen of Rubiel from that stage, or photos. Now, I don't know how much uh, was this video edited, but here he definitely looks like he's in pretty good condition. I mean, you can see glute separation, hamstring separation, and it all looks decently deep, like he looks pretty dry and pretty detailed and everything. I don't know, is this realistic? It doesn't look like it was heavily edited, maybe a little bit sharpened up, maybe contrast is up higher or something like that, but I don't know, this honestly looks much, much different from everything I saw. So if his conditioning was actually good, then it's not only conditioning why he plays so low, it's like his structure and shape and stuff. But again, I don't think his conditioning was this good. I think this video is just showing it, making it seem like it's much better than it actually was. I mean, we saw him compared to Nathan Diash, William Bonac and Becker Stabani, and they were all more conditioned than Exila. So I don't think this video is really presenting the, the, the right picture, what happened on that day, on that show. But I do think if Nexilla nails the conditioning, truly nails it, if his conditioning matches that of Hunter Labrada, even though he's not exactly super blessed with shape and structure, I don't know, man, like that much muscle, that much of a freak factor... Those freaking legs and, and the back and like with the improvements he made in the upper body with a tight midsection and great abs, which is something Hunter is missing. 
I don't know, it's gonna be a good battle. I mean, again, Hunter has established himself as a top 6 Olympian, he even placed as high as 4th. So it's gonna be difficult, extremely difficult for Rubio to win this. As of right now, Hunter is the favorite. He's gotta be the favorite, he's definitely the one who needs to be beaten here. It's his show to lose. Rubio is a rookie, basically. He just turned pro last year. He tried himself out this year at Dubai Pro. He didn't do that well. All the more notable guys beat him, so he's not really proven. Not yet. But if he wins this, if he beats Hunter, that sends a strong message. A really strong message. But again, he needs to truly nail the conditioning, and five weeks is more than enough time, in my opinion. And if he does that, if he nails the conditioning, can he beat Hunter? What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, next up, we got something also very, very interesting. Our Mr. Olympia, Derek Lansford, is showing us his full physique update at 11 weeks out. And I gotta say, I mean, I was criticizing Derek so far for not making a lot of improvements, but I think I'm finally starting to see what his game plan was. I mean, after all, Derek Lansford has the best coach in the world, without question, Hunter Ambud. And who am I to question their game plan? What I thought actually was that Derek is not exactly super devoted, but now it seems like they were focusing on improving the right things. And let's take a look at this physique update, so, like I said before, and I'm gonna stick with this, it doesn't seem like he grew much. He did not get bigger from last year, I think that's pretty much a fact. But, at this point, at 11 weeks out, I think his legs are holding up pretty well. And his conditioning is actually quite good. Now, let's wait and see how much of those legs is he gonna lose until the show day. Maybe it's gonna be different in the end. But it seems like, to me, it seems like those legs are holding better than last year. I mean, maybe it's not that much of a difference. But what is important is that his waist didn't grow at all. I guess that's why Han Rambo kept him leaner and didn't force him to get any bigger, because that's a double-edged sword, I mean, maybe if he added more muscle to those arms and shoulders, I would say upper chest and quads, which is something he does need to work on, if he did that, who knows how the rest of his physique would look like, maybe his waist would get bigger, and he was big enough last year to win the Mr. Olympia, why I wanted to see Derek get bigger is because I wanted to see him get truly shredded for the stage, because we pretty much know that Hardy is gonna be super ripped, and if Derek gets in that kind of conditioning, how much of that size will stay? So, you know, with more muscle, he could afford to truly push for conditioning, but then again, as I said, it's a double-edged sword, maybe some things would go wrong, like for example with Sean Clarida, who lost the Mr. Olympia last year, to Keon Pearson, the judges' feedback was that he was already big enough before, when he was winning the Mr. Olympia, and he got bigger and his stomach was a little bit more distended. And the same thing we saw with Nick Walker, who also got bigger, but his midsection was also bigger, and, you know, in the end, I think he looked worse than the year before. So that's probably why Derek was very cautious, or why Hany Rambut was very cautious. That's one thing. And also, nobody is beating Derek in the back double bicep and back lat spread, probably. Nobody's gonna have a back like this. Nobody does. I mean, basically, Derek's back double bicep from last year is one of the best back double biceps of all time. You know, it's it's like in, in the mix with uh, Ronnie Coleman, uh, Phil Heath, and then I would say Derek Lunsford. You know, history of bodybuilding, I would say. Maybe you guys disagree with me, but that's what I think. And probably the main thing I wanted to point out this year is that it seems like Derek improved his midsection. It seems like he has a better depth in his abs. I don't think his abs and thigh shot looked like this last year. I mean, this still can't compare to Hari Japan. It's not that good, but it's better. It's improved. And the judges are gonna be looking at that. When they see improvements, especially from somebody who is the Mr. Olympia, who is also basically the perfect ambassador for the sport right now. And when they see that he didn't get worse, that his midsection is still nice and tight, and that his abs are improved, and maybe his quads as well, it's very likely to be enough to hold to that title. 
So, I mean, I'm not saying his absent eyes is great, like, Hari's gonna still destroy him in this one, but it seems better. It seems better for sure. And yeah, sure, he will still do the vacuum pose to show how small his uh, waist is, but hopefully he will hold that absent eye shot for longer, which was kind of an issue last year. So, you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of Derek, you know, personality-wise, or physique-wise for that matter, but if he wins again, I mean, heads down, I mean, if he does that, I mean, it's definitely something to be respected, he did what he needed to do in order to do as well as possible, you know, he paid his dues, he did his work, like, you can't deny this guy. So, I, I don't think he was gifted last year, or even though I don't like him too much, I, I gotta respect him, I gotta respect what he does, and it seems like he's doing the right things as of right now. He's focused on improving the abs and on uh, keeping his midsection tight and his waist small, and you know, it very well might be enough, but I don't know if it's gonna be, because Hadi... Hadi is hungry, Hadi is driven, and take a look at him right now. He definitely looks a lot harder, grainier, and there is 11 weeks to go, so I'm pretty sure Hadi is gonna be at his absolute best of all time. Especially now, after realizing how important it is to come in conditioned, and that was probably the reason why he lost last year. He was fuller and bigger than usual, but, you know, against Derek with those freaking shredded glutes and hamstrings and lower back, it's not the it's not the right play. So this year, if he brings the same thing he brought to the Arnold Classic stage, and I think he potentially could be even a little bit better, you know, a little bit harder and fuller and, and rounder maybe, I mean, if he truly nails it, it's going to be very difficult for anybody to beat him, even for the reigning Mr. Olympia champion. But whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, about bodybuilding, subscribe to this channel, guys. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.